salt, a magical thing that can give you high blood pressure and heart attacks, but it can also help you run really, really fast. So how much do you actually need to run really fast? Not this much. It's early, bear with me. Running, as well as most endurance sports actually, is like this never ending cycle of messing up completely and then learning these really valuable lessons that you probably should have already known. And lesson number one, I learned a couple of years ago actually, before I even started running. I went on holiday to Sydney and I thought, hey, I'm a pretty athletic dude, right? I could probably run a half marathon through the Sydney Harbour. That'd be pretty cool. A self-inflicted half marathon as a non-runner. What could go wrong? So the first 10Ks went really well and I felt awesome going under the Sydney Harbour Bridge and all that stuff, really cool. And then the last 10Ks when I came to the turnaround point, I absolutely fell off a cliff and my legs were in bits. And I learned lesson number one of running, which is that running is a muscular activity. And if your legs aren't conditioned to take the pounding of running, then you're going to have a really bad time. And currently I can't take the pounding apparently because it's been like 60 days since I've gotten injured and I still can't quite run that consistently. So epic. And I've resorted to swimming. What am I doing? I think I'm going insane. Why is swimming so hard, man? And so fast forward a few years after this and I finally started running and I got super addicted and my runs went from, you know, 30 minutes to an hour, to an hour and 15, to an hour and 30, to two hours, to two and a half hours. Another two and a half hour mark is where I encountered my second lesson. All right, time for work. Yeah, I am a smart mouse. How do you think I wonder where I am, who I am by now? Just another minute till we sit this high enough. So if you're not with a way, bye bye. Without fueling, you can't actually give these muscles any energy to get yourself down the road. And so I learned that lesson, and I started smashing in the fuel for every run, and everything went really well, right? Not quite, because I started training for races, and I started running longer long runs and harder efforts in the Australian heat, grim. And pretty much, every time I'd get to the end of one of these mega workouts, I would be mentally cooked, pure misery, absolutely cooked. And I was using these gels and I thought, hey, maybe I'm still under feeling, so I'd take more and more gels and still no change. But I didn't think anything of it. I thought, huh, maybe I'm just weak. We need to figure out what's actually going on here. And the only place that I can think of to go to find the answers is of course, YouTube. An electrical charge and travels in and out of cell. I caught up these goo gels. With electrolytes, subjects were able to go longer before they cramped. Electrolytes, electrolytes. Two scoops of G1M Spore. $77, not a chance I'm buying that. But I think there's some clues here with the electrolytes. So a gel is just not enough? Okay. No electrolytes, no electrolytes, no electrolytes, no electrolyte, dude. So looking at these gels, it seems like none of them are gonna help you in a marathon, apart from just giving you Glycogen. So what about those hydration drinks? Hey? Maybe they have enough electrolytes and water. Who knows? Not really. I mean, it might give you an extra 20 minutes in a marathon. In fact, it's got so much potassium and no sodium at all. This is literally gonna dehydrate you, and I'll show you why when I get home. Water and electrolytes are like those best mates that go everywhere together. In order for water to stay in our body, specifically in our muscular cells and blood, we need to have the right amount of concentrations of sodium, potassium, calcium, and magnesium. And if we aren't hydrated, we start to slow down and our heart rate starts to go up and we actually start to bonk. Not ideal. Electrolytes are also pretty good at multitasking because they also help with nerve function and muscle contractions. But that's more so magnesium and calcium. The neurotransmitter tag team world champs. So if we only drink water and have no electrolytes, we're actually gonna dilute our electrolytes even more, which is gonna lead us into bonk town real quick. So if gels suck at giving us these electrolytes and hydration drinks also suck, maybe we need to find a different product. Let's go look online. Look at these brands trying to sell literal table salt at an insane markup. What is going on? It's like bottled water. 
all over again. This one's keto friendly. Thank God we've got a packet of salt that's keto friendly. No way am I buying this. We're gonna make it ourselves. Okay, so I've done some research online and I've found that there's a certain amount of electrolytes that are lost per litre of sweat. And so we can use that to make calculations on the amount of electrolytes I'll need to consume to get back into my body. So let's do that. Okay, so magnesium citrate actually has an absorption rate of around 8%. So we need to bump this up so that we get the same amount per hour whilst accounting for the malabsorption. Same with calcium at about 20%. Okay, so we're gonna match the doses of those products with this. So you need 1.4 of these packets to equal the right amount of potassium. So one. God, this is a lot of maths right now that I'm doing and I'm probably getting it wrong. Seven grams. Okay, so we just top up the rest. So magnesium, we need 110. Each tablet is 295. So if we cut this one in half, cool. 110, done. Calcium. So if we go once again in half, that will give us 300. Done. I'm not gonna fill it all the way up because that will take a long time, but this is about four hours worth. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna test this out tomorrow on my long ride. But first, I've gotta blend this thing up. Hey guys, I'm just editing this video, but I just recently did a 100K ride and I used this secret super formula and I didn't bonk, so that's amazing. But I didn't actually record the ride because Connor from before actually didn't charge the GoPro. Well done, idiot. Anyway, so here's the bullet points of what I actually did. So I calculated my average sweat rate per hour by doing a one hour time trial. And then after this, I used the average electrolytes that most people lose per hour to calculate how much I should intake. And then all I did is match up the ingredients that I bought from the chemist in my Ninja blender and just whizzed it up and threw it in a bottle. Easy peasy. But I think maybe next time I'll actually buy the raw products and make it really accurate. Stay tuned. Peace.